Hey everybody, look at me, I'm outside. <laughs> it's not all that warm out today. It has been warmer recently, but it's good enough. It's good to be out in the big room under the, the bright blue ceiling. Feels good. <sighs> so somebody who's a regular viewer and commenter on these videos and whose comments and feedback I do appreciate, so don't take this the wrong way. Uh, recently, I, I put out a video, and I think it was just for, you know what, I, I'll make the video public, but it was just for the, the Patreon folks. Uh, and in it, I was talking about the fertility. I don't want to call it a crisis, but it, it's an issue. You know, people in industrial societies, particularly people who live in cities, and even more so, uh, it doesn't matter if you're in cities or not, where places where women have access to the internet, usually via cell phone, smartphone, Fertility rates are falling through the floor. Places like Brazil, you know, poor, corrupt, tropical Brazil, you would think would have a very high fertility rate. They're below replacement level already. Most of the places that haven't fallen below replacement level are in Africa. And, you know, all the places where birth rates are above, you know, five per woman are, are in Africa. Most places in Asia, Central America, South America, but of course, particularly in, you know, wealthy places like Japan, South Korea, the United States, uh, Western Europe, people have forgotten how to have babies. Well, they haven't forgotten. They just understand it's very, very expensive. You know, in a rural context, kids are free labor and a lot of them are going to die. So if you want to have one or two left by the time you hit retirement age, somebody to take care of you, you better have six or more. But more and more people are learning that's not the case. And in fact, it backfires. So, you know, great. If you think people are a plague, if you think humans are a plague on the planet, well, this is wonderful news. But if you like humans and, you know, humans are the problem and the solution, um, we need something, you know, we need something to address the coming situation where we have a lot of old people and not so many young people. And, you know, you can't run a society where all the young people are taking care of the old people. They're there's other stuff to do, you know? There is infrastructure to maintain. There is food to produce. Although, granted, food production doesn't involve much human labor these days. So in response to this video, and I talked about, you know, robotics and life, not life extension so much as vitality extension. You know, some medical means of keeping people in their 80s and 90s as physically robust as people in their 40s and 50s so that they can continue, if not to be, you know, working big physical jobs or, you know, doing hard but necessary manual labor, at least looking after themselves, you know, at least providing for their own physical needs, you know, getting out of bed in the morning, getting dressed, going to the bathroom, showering, shaving, all that stuff. A lot of people need help with that. If we don't have very sophisticated humanoid robots or robots that are designed to operate in a noisy, chaotic environment, which is built by and for humans, um, then there's a lot of people who are going to be under, under cared for and may well live out their lives in abject poverty and neglect and die earlier than they need to and in very unfortunate circumstances. And somebody wrote, well, hey, you know, if everybody lived, if they, if everybody had the diets of traditional peoples, if everybody lived the lifestyles of traditional peoples, then, you know, they'd be healthier longer into old age. Yeah, great. What's a traditional, like, hunter-gatherer or, you know, a rural physical labor-based lifestyle that scales up to, you know, societies of hundreds of millions of people living in urban centers? How does that work? And so if, if somebody describes a problem at a societal level and your solution is everybody needs to exercise the same knowledge, care, self-discipline, diligence, and commitment to lifestyle that I do or that I imagine that I do, then everything would be fine. Well, that's, you know, if you're talking about things at a societal level, particularly if you're talking about technology, infrastructure, public policy, just appealing to everybody thinking and behaving like you do is is irrelevant it is completely irrelevant it is no it's no contribution at all you know to discussions on a societal level if you're talking to a friend if you're talking to a family member or a loved one about what they as an individual can do for their lives and yeah 
crank up the self-discipline, you know, crank up the, tell them to lift weights and to do yoga and meditate every morning and go vegan or whatever, you know, self-discipline is great for individuals. But if you're talking about society at large, just saying, hey, everybody needs to be as self-disciplined as I am and they need to be as, as you know, as sophisticated, as adroit, as, as smooth and just, you know, capable as I am, then basically, you know, that's just saying get a job. That's just saying, you know, adopt my values, adopt my worldview, and you'll be fine. You know, you can say that to an individual. You can't say that to a society. I mean, you can. Lots of people do because it, it, think, it makes them feel good. It makes them feel superior. It makes them think that, well, all the people who are, you know, dying from their bad industrial diets and their alcohol consumption and smoking cigarettes, well, you know, they're getting what they deserve. You reap what you sow. Yeah, you do reap what you sow. You do. You know? I've reaped what I've sown. I have, you know, there, there are situations in my life, there are aspects of my life that I don't like that are absolutely the result of the choices that I've made over decades. You know, if you're looking to help somebody change their life, rubbing their nose in that, that's not helpful. That's not for them, that's for you. Okay, <laughs> that is all. Talk to you later.